first you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Good afternoon and welcome to City Hour, the radio show that brings you all the latest information about events in and around our city. Today, we have with us Cynthia Smith, who is heading up this year's City Fair. Cynthia, would you start by giving us some of the basic information about the fair? Where will it take place this year? I'm glad you asked that question, because I know most people will be expecting the fair to be at the fairgrounds as usual, but we've had to change the location this year due to some construction work. You know, they're building the new high school in that neighbourhood and they've been using the fairgrounds as a place to store construction materials. So we've moved the fair to City Park, which I think is a wonderful location. Yes, that will be a great place for the fair. I understand that the fair begins on Friday morning with a special opening event. Actually, it won't begin until that evening. But you're right about the special event. Traditionally, we've begun with a parade, but this year our opening event will be a special dance performance. And the most exciting part is that the mayor will be one of the dancers. The mayor is a woman of many talents. Cynthia, could you tell our listeners about the price of admission? What will it cost to attend the fair? We're trying to keep the price down as much as possible. A three-day pass is just $25. Or you can buy a Saturday or Sunday only pass for $15. The opening event on Friday, the dance performance, doesn't cost anything to attend. And we're hoping a lot of people will come to watch that. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Could you tell us about some of the events planned for Saturday and Sunday, the main days of the fair? We have a lot of exciting things planned. There are a number of events, especially for children, including a clown show on Saturday afternoon. On Saturday evening, we've got an event that can be enjoyed by the whole family, a concert by the lake. I'm sure that will be a popular event. Is there anything special planned for Sunday? Yes, a really fun event. And we hope a lot of people will participate. There'll be a singing contest in the afternoon. It's open to everyone at no charge. It doesn't matter whether you're an experienced singer or not. If you've always dreamed of singing on stage, this is your chance. That sounds like a lot of fun. I think it will be. I'd also like your listeners to know that besides the special events I've mentioned, there will be things taking place all weekend. For example, at the food court, international food will be served. You'll be able to sample dishes from all around the world. There will also be special games for children at different locations around the fair. Will there be things people can buy, souvenirs, anything like that? We have a large area set aside where there will be crafts for sale. This will be an opportunity to buy many lovely handmade things and to get to know some of our local artists and craftspeople as well. It sounds like there will be a lot of fun for everyone at this year's fair. Thank you for sharing the information with us, Cynthia. Thank you for inviting me. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a lecture given by a counselor. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen to the tape and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Hi, I am your counselor for this year. Today we will visit the facilities available to you on our campus. As students, you should take advantage of everything you have available to you. How many of you like sports? Well, I hope most of you do, because our school has great sports facilities. We have an indoor gym with state-of-the-art equipment. First, I want to tell you about our basketball facilities. There are two basketball courts. Both are full court and open for student use. We offer basketball leagues that all students are invited to join. Just sign up with a team. Usually, there are games on the courts, but during league time, only the teams are allowed to use the courts. The basketball courts are open 24 hours a day. If you want a job, you can be a referee at the games. Next, I want to tell you about the tennis facilities. We have five tennis courts available for student use. The tennis courts are open every day, 8 a.m. until 10 in the evening. You should call ahead to reserve a court because they are very popular and can often be booked weeks in advance. There are rackets and balls available for rent at the front desk of the courts. There is an Olympic-sized swimming pool that is open for students and the general public. There are also showers and locker rooms available. The swimming pool is open every day, 9 a.m. until 7 in the evening. There are openings for the position of lifeguards, so if you are looking for a job in the sun, this might be good for you. Now look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 16 to 20. There are also two weight rooms and a gymnastics room. The weight rooms have all the standard equipment available. Please check with the gym to see the open hours because they vary from time to time. The gymnastics room is usually not open for individual users because there are almost always classes held in the room. However, if you are interested, you may sign up for gymnastics classes. Plus, if you like martial arts and boxing, we offer classes for everyone, from beginners to advanced students. Please check the schedule for availability. There is everything available, from Chinese wushu to Brazilian wrestling. I will talk for a brief moment about our library system. Our campus has three libraries available to undergraduate students: one additional graduate library and one faculty library. The libraries are open daily until midnight, except for during testing periods, when the libraries will be open 24 hours. Please look on a map to see where the libraries are located. All students with a valid ID can check out books, with a maximum of 10 books at a time. Books can be checked out for a two-week period and then renewed for one month maximum. After that, there is a one dollar fine per week that the book is overdue. I will repeat that there is a hefty one dollar fine per week, so it is a good idea to return books on time. If you lose a book, then you will have to repay the library for it plus a fine. If you damage a book, most likely you will have to repay the value of the book. So please enjoy the library facilities, but take care of the school's belongings. The library is also equipped with two hundred computers for student use. They are all internet ready and available for use. You must sign up at the library for one-hour time slots. 
you may sign up for up to three consecutive slots at a time. No one can use the computers without first signing in at the library. That is it for now. Thank you for your attention. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear a tutor and a student discussing transport. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Come in, John, come in. How's the paper going? Morning, Mr. Taylor. Pretty well, actually. Good, good. It's not all about bicycles, is it? I know you've got a thing about bicycles. Yes, but that's just... There are other ways to get around town, you know. Yes, I know. And I think I've researched pretty well all of them. Right then. So your paper's about urban transport in London, eh? Not just London, but that is going to be the focus. I've also looked at urban transport systems in cities around the world. Madrid, Beijing, Mexico City, Amsterdam, Paris, other countries too. You have been busy, haven't you? What's the purpose of your study? Well, two things, really. I want to see if there are more efficient ways of organizing urban transport systems while cutting down on traffic congestion, and of course pollution, and to find ways of encouraging people to use public transport instead of their cars. Let's start with that then, with cars. I think you have a hard time thinking of ways to persuade people to swap their cars for a crowded bus or underground train. They're convenient, comfortable, faster, and sometimes they're a status symbol, too. Okay, I agree that cars will probably always be the most popular means of transport. But there are ways to cut down the number of people who bring their cars into the city. It's a problem that affects every big city, and several methods have been tried. I know, I know, as I've found to my cost. When I go into London, which I do two or three times a week, I have to pay five pounds to get into the city centre. Has your research thrown up any more places where they do this? Oh, yes. Apart from London, there's Oslo, Stockholm, Singapore. Now, there... In Singapore, they've got it really organized. They've imposed a tax on all roads leading into the city center, and they have electronic sensors that identify each car and then debit a credit card belonging to the owner. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. And other cities, instead of charging motorists to come into the city center, have tried other measures. Such as? Well, 
In Athens, cars are only allowed to go into the city center on alternate days, depending on their license plate number. In Bogota and some other Latin American cities, such as Quinto and Sao Paulo, they've developed what is called a BRT system. A what? A BRT system, a bus rapid transit system. People leave their cars outside the city and take buses, which have special express lanes into and through the city. It's been so successful that they're trying it out in Mexico City, Beijing, Seoul, and Taipei. And other cities are pedestrianizing more and more areas of the city center. I see. How have these measures affected traffic congestion and pollution levels? In most cases, it has led to a reduction in the number of cars entering the city center. Certainly in Singapore, where it's now much easier to move around the city and the air is much cleaner than most other cities in that part of the world. London, too, I believe. I can give some facts and figures if you like. Please do. In the first year after the tax was introduced, the number of people using buses to get to the city center rose by 38%. Really? 38%? Incredible. Yes, and the number of cars entering central London dropped by about 18%. There's more. The number of people using bicycles and mopeds went up 17%. I knew we'd get to bicycles at some point. Well, yes. In the city, the bicycle has a lot going for it. You can avoid traffic jams. There are no parking problems. They don't pollute. They're cheap to run, and they don't cost very much. Oh, and here's another fact for you. You can fit 20 bicycles in the space needed to park one car. Well, I never... But I can't see it catching on. Besides, we seem to be getting off the point. Not at all. China, Japan, and Holland have all integrated bicycles into their urban transport systems. In Holland and Japan, they've got special parking areas for commuters who get to the station by bike. And Japan has even built multi-story parking facilities for bikes close to railway stations. Then look at America. In New York, delivery services use bicycles because they can deliver messages and small parcels far more quickly and at much lower cost than cars or vans. Even the police use bicycles. In fact, in about 80% of the towns in America where the population is around half a million, the police regularly patrol on bicycles. And they have proved to be effective because they can reach the scene of an accident or crime faster and more quietly than officers in patrol cars, making a lot more arrests per officer. Well, you do know your bicycles, don't you? But I do need to hear more about the public transport system and what's to be done about that. And I'd like you to look a bit more into the economics of it, how much it will cost to improve the situation, and so on. Okay? Right. See you next Tuesday. Yes, next Tuesday. Bye, Mr. Taylor. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a conversation about using recorded delivery and registered post. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Tom, where are you going? To the post office. I'm going to send some packets to Leeds. Do you know the best way to send them? Well, if your need is for a record of posting and delivery rather than compensation for loss, recorded delivery is particularly suitable for sending documents and papers of little or no monetary value. Well, what can we send for recorded delivery? All kinds of inland postal packets except parcels, airway and railway letters and parcels. The service does not apply to mail for the Irish Republic. I see. How do I post them? You should get a certificate of posting form from the container in the post office and follow the instructions shown on the reverse. The certificate will be your record of posting. Can I send anything in the post? No, you can't. You must not send banknotes, currency notes and some valuable things because there is no special handling in the post. Recorded delivery mail is carried with the ordinary unregistered post and there is no special security treatment. How do we use recorded delivery? Well, when your letter or packet is delivered, it is signed for by the recipient and a record is kept by the post office. The post office does not undertake to deliver recorded delivery or any other mail to the addressee in person, but to the address shown. You can obtain confirmation of delivery by completing an advice of delivery form either at the time of posting or later. This form will be signed by a post office official, not by the addressee of the recipient. A fee is payable, which is lower if the form is handed in at the time of posting. Is there any compensation for loss? Well, compensation is limited. Compensation may be paid for loss or damage, but will not be paid for money or any other inadmissible item. If you want a speedy service for articles of value with extra security of handling en route and wish to have compensation in the event of loss or damage, you should use registered post. What can we send if we use registered post? Any first-class letter or packet except airway letter or railway letter. How do we post? I mean, what should we do? Well, you should make sure that the packet is made up in a strong cover and then it is fastened with wax, gum or other adhesive substance. Hand the packet to the post office counter clerk, together with the cost of postage and the registration fee. Do not post it in the posting box. Make sure that the fee paid is adequate to cover the value of the content. The counter clerk will give you a certificate of posting which he has initiated with the date stamped. Is there any special security for the registered post? Yes. All registered mail receives special security treatment. Packing is very important because registration is not in itself a safeguard against damage. The contents of registered packets must be adequately packed. How do we pack then? Do we have to use special envelopes? Yes, you have to send the articles in one of the registered letter envelopes sold by the post office. These envelopes are already stamped for first-class postage and have the minimum registration fee. What about the compensation? Compensation will not be paid for the following articles, such as banknotes, currency notes, trading stamps, coupons and some valuable things unless they are enclosed in one of the registered letter envelopes sold by the post office. I see. How does it deliver? The recipient on delivery signs for your registered mail. The post office does not undertake to deliver registered or any other mail to the addressee in person, but to the address shown. You can obtain confirmation of delivery by paying an additional fee and completing an advice of delivery form, either at the time of posting or later. If you require the recipient's signature on the advice of delivery, the form must be handed in at the time of posting, otherwise a post office official will sign the certificate. The advice of delivery fee is lower if the form is handed in at the time of posting. Thank you very much for all this useful information. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute
I, I, I can feel the blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing Take me for granted and you know I'm leaving I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving I could take this crap